The following is an excerpt from the According to Metal podcast. Joining us on According to Metal, a genre that's near and dear to my heart. For those of you who listen to the show, you know this to be the case. And unfortunately, some of my favorite bands that made me fall in love with the genre in the first place kind of sort of suck nowadays. But yet, leave it to certain bands. Leave it to new bands that are essentially waving the flag that is melodic death metal. And I'm so glad that they have joined us on this episode. And this is the first time we've actually had two people from the band actually join us on the show. And of course, if you got a chance to hear my review of Undress, uh, uh most recent album and their debut album, uh, you know that it was freaking Awesome stuff. And so I'm really excited that Undrask, uh, or members of Undrask, have decided to join us here on the program. Of course, Steve Wynn, the vocalist, and Eric Collier from this killer ass band, Undrask, that, uh, you know, Battle Through Time, awesome debut album they just came out with. And I can't wait to talk a little bit more about the album and learn a little bit more about these guys. So, Steve, Eric, welcome to According to Metal, guys. Uh, thanks up? a lot. Thanks, thanks for having us. us on. Well, it's it's an absolute pleasure to actually have you on because, you know, it's one of those things where. Like I said before, and I know you guys listened to the review and you shared it, and thank you so much for doing that, but as you know, man, I mean, you know, melodic death metal is one of those genres that, you know, I was a Pantera and a Megadeth and a Metallica guy, just like so many other people who get into heavy metal, and then I heard, you know, Horacle from In Flames, and I about shit my pants, and it just changed everything in regards to how I was into that genre and consumed by it for years after that. Like, that's all I wanted to listen to. But yet what's funny is we have people on the show, and even though they're in a particular genre of metal band, they're not necessarily big fans of that music all the time, which is really, really weird. But something tells me as good as you guys are at it, that's not the case with you. Uh, yeah, so, well, you know, I, I'd say that it actually got started just because of uh, you know, similar musical tastes. You know, I, Steve and I wound up working together. And at some point, we, we just discovered that, you know, we both like metal. And then we started you know, naming bands that we like. And they were super similar. And Steve's like, oh, man, you got to meet this dude, uh, Daryl. And, you know, he'd known Daryl for you know, eight or nine years before or something like that from previous jobs. And uh, so one day we decided, you know, we were going to go to this beer festival in Greensboro. And that was actually the first time I met Daryl. And so I was, I was wearing a Scar Symmetry uh, Unseen Empire T-shirt. And the first thing that Daryl ever says to me, he walks up points at my shirt and says holographic universe was a better album. <laughs> and I said, uh, yeah, I, I think I agree. <laughs> and so, um, you know, so we, we just hit it off really quick after that. You know, we started talking about the bands that we liked and it was just, you know, we, I think he like showed me his phone and we're just going down the list of, you know, music. It was like, Oh yeah, like these guys, these, and it was just instant chemistry. You know, we were, we were on the same level. Uh, so, you know, we, we finished out the beer festival, got hammered and all that. And then, uh, you know, the next day, uh, you know, all hungover and whatnot. We met up at Steve's place and then just uh, just started like, going over some little licks and stuff that we had done separately and started writing some stuff together. And that's how the EP was born. Uh, you know, it was just super chemistry. And, you know, I would say, uh, you know, a lot of our influences were definitely melodic death metal. Uh, some progressive stuff in there. Uh, you know, we're, we're definitely fans of a lot of different metal genres. But, uh, you know, what the stuff we were writing was just kind of coming out really melodic and uh you know, we just went from there we didn't really try to focus on a genre just what we wrote and i gotta tell you i gotta go agree with daryl on this one because holographic universe morphogenesis as a, as a whole <laughs> is just one of the best damn songs they've ever done ever 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 in the history of ever so i don't disagree actually we're all on the same page with that one absolutely well, that's very cool, guys. Uh, so one of the one of the things that we've really been surprised by is we've done these interviews from, well, not only all over the world, but particularly here in the United States, is bands have, like we had Tony uh, Tony Piccoli on from Eminent Sonic Destruction, who I absolutely love, and Jason and I went to go see a few months ago, and he was like, dude, you would not believe the metal scene in Detroit, Michigan. You just wouldn't believe it or in that area. So tell us what the metal scene is like in North Carolina. So is it do you fit into that? Where are you at in North Carolina? Kind of let our fans know what's it seems like. You know, what, what is it like there? Well, uh, you know, everybody that uh, plays the heavy stuff like that's pretty much welcome in the metal scene down here. Everybody's pretty accepting. Uh, but a lot of the bands we see here are more of the southern heavy metal, like, uh, you know, Pantera influenced, down and dirty, raw. Um, seems to be a lot of bands like that here. <clears throat> and uh, we've played with, with a with probably three or four um, more than once, and uh, everybody is just really cool. Uh, they they love our stuff. I mean, because we're 
not a lot of people play the type of music we're playing down here, the melodic death metal, especially in the Greensboro area. I mean, if you go to Charlotte and Raleigh, you kind of get some bands similar to us. But here in Greensboro, we're, we're fairly unique, and, and a lot of people are, are, are doing well to support us in that. Well, what's great about the music you do is, unfortunately, nowadays, at least in my opinion, at least here in the States, you guys are kind of unicornish. I just don't hear... Uh, bands doing Mellow Death any damn good at least, let alone really doing it much anymore. So I think it's really cool uh, that you guys are not only doing what you're doing, but you're doing it so well. And one of the things that really kind of stood out for me when uh, you know checking out Battle Through Time was the fact that it's a concept album, which especially for a melodic death band is, is really, really uh, different. But what I think is really cool about, uh, and we've talked to other guests on, on the show about this before, is how albums come together and how you record, you know, uh, you know, 10 tracks or 12 tracks or eight tracks or however they end up coming together as part of the album. And sometimes, you know, it just obviously makes sense to start out with a song like No Graves for the Dead as your lead track because the song is killer and it kicks ass. But then you also have a story to tell because it's a concept album. But what I really like about what you've done is you figured out a way, at least in my opinion, to make every song be uh, can be played as a standalone track, and it's not like oh I missed part of the story, but yet it all kind of ties together. You know, it was was that something that was kind of planned ahead, and was that it w- was that kind of done on purpose to make it so you didn't feel like you know when you're listening to the astonishing from Dream Theater, like oh well I guess if I only listened to a couple tracks, I missed half the damn story. So what's the point? Um, <laughs> you guys did a really good job of making it stand out uh, or having each track be individual, but yet. All be one story. Does that make any sense? I mean, kind of, kind of take us through how that kind of came to be. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I guess the best way to think of the album is sort of like a television series. Uh, there is sort of an overarching story, an overarching concept, right? And then there are sort of you know, the individual episodes that have their own sub story, I guess. And in this case, you know, that sub story is is about uh, the realities or the uh, the lifetimes or time frames that our protagonist uh, experiences or, or goes through. Um, so for example, in, you know, in no graves for the dead, that's sort of supposed to be like his, his first reality, right? His first, uh, the first time he jumps through the gate, this is what happens. Uh, well, I kind of gave away a little bit of the, the, the premise there, but anyway, it's, he, he dies in no graves for the dead, which is essentially a, a like a zombie apocalypse kind of story. Right. Um, and then, Instantly, he goes into the, the, the second track, Conscripted, where we sort of get the first feel of the overall plot, right? It's, it's not just the, the zombie story anymore. We now have uh, sort of the explanation of, okay, this guy died, and all of a sudden, he's now, boom, in another battle, another reality, another time, something. Uh, and he sort of realizes during this track, you know, what's going on and says, oh, you know, I, I can die and just immediately come back uh, in another battle, another reality, and just you know, fight more dudes, you know, this is awesome. And he sort of embraces that. Uh, and then, you know, the other, a couple more tracks that sort of tell stories of his, his, uh, next experiences, his next realities. Uh, and then, you know, a couple of tracks that go back to that concept of the overarching plot, uh, final right battle through time, kind of tell the story a little further of, uh, well, maybe it's not so great that this is happening continuously without end. Uh, and then sort of gets into why it happened, how it happened, uh, and then the ultimate resolution of everything at the end of Battle Through Time uh, to to the to the whole whole story to wrap everything up with a little bow. Well, you know, uh, doing a, a debut album as a concept album is something you really don't see very often, and it's kind of risky. Um, and now, if you had a label, and I know you don't right now, but if you had one. They may have said, oh, put the songs in a different order, or, you know, they're not going to give you that creative freedom to do a concept album, or make it longer, make it shorter, whatever. Now, you guys don't have a label, so my question is to you, and, and we're seeing more and more bands do this today, going without a label. Are you doing that on purpose? Was that a conscious decision, or was it, you know, um, you just, at the time, you couldn't find one right when you needed one? I mean, kind of, how did that work? What was that process like? A little drawn out. Um, after we did the EP, we didn't realize uh, the attention we would potentially be getting, so we never really set out to, you know, want to be on a label or have any interest in signing with anything because uh, you know we were only really sure. But uh, you know, as soon as we started writing the new stuff and getting into the recording and, and finally getting to uh, the studio with uh, 
the basement recording there with uh, Jamie King and Winston Salem. Uh, you know, we realized we had something you know, that could potentially be shopped around. Um, but, you know, as it goes into the holidays and in, in, uh, <clears throat> in the winter, there's really not much going on uh, at the labels. So we weren't getting much interest. And then, the, you know, finally we kind of got a little uh, pent up and ready to put our stuff out there. And so we decided to just kind of go it alone and see what happens after that. Yeah, I'd say one of the big factors there was, was uh, you know, uh, Daryl and I are going to be on board uh, 70,000 tons of metal, not playing, just spectating. Uh, and we kind of wanted to have the album available then to uh, to, to hand out because, you know, there's there's going to be a lot of serious metal fans on that boat. If you're there, you know, you're, you're really into metal. And, you know, a lot of bands that are going to be there are sort of in line with, with what we're playing. You know, Scar Symmetry is going to be there. More Principi MS is going to be there. Uh, so we just wanted to have that available to and we're just going to, you know, give them out freely on the boat and sort of, you know, just spread the word, get our name out there. And that's our primary concern right now. So, yeah. And it's funny. I, I can't blame you if I was in your position, especially as good as the album is, I would have been antsy too to really make sure that that got out there. And it's, you kind of mentioned, you know, you're, you know, we weren't getting all the interest we really wanted, which is a damn shame. And it doesn't make any sense to me that labels wouldn't jump on your sound and the music you do. And speaking of the music you do, you know, if I had five minutes, if you had five minutes, you had to pick one song that you could play that would give everyone a taste of how the band sounds. What would that signature song be, Steve? What, what do you think? Uh, I would say "Final Right." If I were to pick a song, it uh, everybody kind of shines through it at some point in that song, and you kind of get a feel of what everybody's skill and capabilities are musically. Um, it's, it's a really good showcase song. It's a little uh, crazy and feverish and fervent, but it, it tells the story the way it needs to, and it's it's very true to the album and true to uh, what we like to do. Very cool. Well, let's check that out. This is the the track that Steve Wynn and Eric Collier, of course, from Undrask, with a killer, killer album that you must check out. But this is off that album. This is Final Right. Check them out. 